Hello everybody and welcome to It's a Sure Thing, the community collective show that is growing global across 50 different networks of live stream TV and TV on demand. It's going live on my Facebook pages and My Time TV and also our guests, uh, Matthew Greenwood, his Facebook page as well. Thank you all for joining today or tonight, depending on where you are listening in the world. The Enlightened Tribe It's a Sure Thing show is all about community making a difference. Please share, invite your friends, invite your family, let people know to come on board and watch this. And if you if you haven't been able to watch it or you know somebody else that would like to watch it, we will be having a replay. Uh, and it will also be created as a blog and added to my website as well. So hello, Paul. Thank you for joining us. Thanks very much. We've got an exciting show planned for this evening. Well, actually, it's not planned at all, which is what makes it even more exciting. So our guest this evening is a gentleman who is in South Australia, but who has actually lived in South Dakota on uh, the Rosebud Indian Reservation. He's done his shamanism training over there. Uh, he's brought that beautiful elder wisdom back to South Australia with him. He makes drums and flutes and has white sage and he's got a, a business called um, Grey Wolf Trading. He runs a number of different retreats, workshops, uh, shamanism training because he is a shamanism um, he's got his own meditation CD uh, he does guided meditations in his TP uh, what this gentleman doesn't do I'm not sure he pretty much does everything he also is in direct contact with the galactic beings and um, we may get some surprise visitors this evening so it is with absolute pleasure that I welcome South Australia's shaman, Matthew Greenwood. Hello, Matthew. How are you? Hello, Sue. <laughs> Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, wow. What an accolade. So 20 years you've been in, in the healing industry and... 30. Dis Sorry? 30. 32. 30 32. 32 yep. years. Okay. I beg your pardon, 32 years, wow. Right. Okay, so it all started way back <laughs> when yes. you were a lad. And what, what got you on this journey, Matthew? Can you share with us a little bit about your story as what brought you here? I'll try to be quick. Um, hmm. So I was, I'm a furniture maker by trade. Um, I, not having had any spiritual experiences um, up until this one day in the workshop and I heard a voice and that voice was right beside me and it was a male voice and he said uh, Matthew there's more to you and there's more to life you need to go and find it now my background was um, a lot of chronic illnesses through my life and I realized looking back there was a chronic illness every seven years and I realized that I was when I heard that voice, I was a year before the next seven year um, time frame Psycho. coming up. Exactly. So I knew I had to change the way I was living. And uh, this stepping onto a spiritual path just changed my whole life. Um, it was amazing. I didn't, I thought, I'd actually had to remember having a, I think about this about a week before I heard that voice. And I thought to myself, is this what life is? And I, I was picturing myself looking a bit like Geppetto making Pinocchio with a, a leather apron on and half glasses and a pipe. And I'm thinking, is that what I'm going to be when I'm 70? <laughs> I can actually see the resemblance a little bit there. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> not, the, not the 70, but, you know, you... you, you... <laughs> Maybe too much information. <laughs> All right. So um, so craftsmanship is part of, of what you do. And I know that you are building a, um, a canoe at the moment and have been a cabinet maker. So your canoe time is your, that's your you time, isn't it? That's when you go to your shed and, and you, you, you man shed and, and have time to just uh, connect. Yeah. 
It very much is. Look, I've realised it's it's been over the, the COVID period, uh, probably over the last 12 months or so that I've been making it and in my part time. And uh, I've realised being so busy, I've needed to have something that's just me. And uh, and it's been a great way. I, I find it like meditation. So um, it's it's yeah. very special to me. Beautiful. And you also offer drum making workshops. Yes. And uh, fan making workshops. Smudging fan making workshops. Um, smudging fans. Yes. Smudging fan. Yes. And uh, okay. also rattle making. Um, Beautiful. And when the canoe is, is finished, I'll be yes. offering uh, sessions out on a lake in the canoe. So, okay. Well, we'll talk about that maybe another time we get you on sure. here when you're ready to launch the oh, canoe. Yes. And yes. What your next event will be to have that um, on the water because I know it's going to be really, really special. Mm. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge a few people that have hopped on already. So, Shana, good evening. Um, you probably know Shana. I do, yes. Yeah. And Alison. Hey, and Alison. Okay, thanks for joining us. And thanks, Adair. She's put my two favourite healers in one place. <laughs> and she'll be there for the canoe sessions. <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'll give her um, a free one for that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, Matthew, you also love to go out into Mount Crawford. Yes. And that's where it's a very sacred space. And I've had the privilege of you taking me there and showing me a few beautiful sacred spaces and, and a beautiful experience happened for me while we were there as well. Um, and is that where you did uh, a few of your photo shoots and, and the cover of your meditation CD, your sound yes. CD? Yeah, okay. some of it. Yes, I did. Um, yeah. And uh, it's it's been an amazing place. And all the time I've been um, here in South Australia, I've always been drawn to Mount Crawford. And uh, mm -hmm. I realised why after knowing the head ranger up there for some time, he said there's crystal energy right throughout Mount Crawford area. And um, and there's also galactic portals up there too. And uh, that's where, very interesting place. Very interesting place. So now just touching on the galactic, um, yes. I know there's probably quite a few people here on the show listening, really curious to know what that's all about so in a nutshell Ooh. yeah yeah i know there's the, i know it's a it's a, it's a lot but when when you say galactic it's 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 beings from another planet basically yes yeah so um okay in a nutshell uh I've been... how, do you work, how do you work with them how what happens all right so i have there's probably about half a dozen at the moment that I'm in communication with on and off. Um, and look, I don't sit down and get in the lotus position and turn meditation music on to hear them. I can be driving along in a car or um, on the loo or, <laughs> or, or just out in, in building my canoe. Um, if they need to talk to me, they will. And they give me a lot of information about what's coming. Um, and They've also given me a lot of insights over the last probably 20 years around um, the changes, the energetic changes that have been happening on the earth through to DNA activations that were starting to happen about 12 years ago. And it's, it's been an incredibly educational journey. And, um, and I've actually physically seen two of them so far yeah. um, that I can remember. Um, so um, it's it's been uh, communicating with them is like communicating with someone from a different um, civilization on Earth. Yeah. You know, we don't know anything about them. We assume they think the same way we do, and they don't. Uh, they try to, but they they're not us. And so we have to learn to bridge this gap between us and uh, yeah. and. Yeah, we do a pretty good job. You have to be very flexible with the way you think, um, not assume, not have expectations, but just to do your best to work together, which is what really we all should be doing, whether we're galactic beings or 
um, earth beings. Yes, exactly, exactly. Um, thank you for explaining that. And the, the other thing regarding um, entities as well and energies in your auric field, and I, I know you'll explain that in a moment for, for people who have never heard that before. I know I certainly hadn't 15 years ago. I have no idea what an auric field was. Um, mm. But when people people can come and see you if they f don't feel like they've, they've been themselves and um you can pick up on the energy and sense whether there's another kind of energy that's around them that is basically hosting off their body and taking over their body and they don't know anything they don't know what to do with it so um is that kind of if you can explain a little bit more about entities and how you sure. clear negative energies from people and maybe give us an example of one of your experiences with a client please okay so entities can take many forms um, anything from a spirit uh, so you can have if a person was dark in nature in life they can definitely go over into the spirit world and be dark in nature also and get up to mischief and, and sometimes a lot of trouble uh, but the majority of entities from other places um, other than the earth, um, they all are very similar in the way they work. They're basically um, uh, just wanting to feed off, I think you said it, wanting to feed off our energy. They're looking to, to feed off our darker, lower vibrational emotions. So. If we're buzzing at a high frequency and we're doing all this beautiful spiritual work, uh, um, generally you tend not to attract uh, dark entities. But if you've come from a pretty dark place and uh, you may have still dark people around you and you're in that environment a lot, you're more open to be drawing one of those entities into your space who really are just there to perpetuate that negative process that you're going through so they've got more to feed off because that's all they're interested in is feeding off that lower vibrational energy um, yeah. so it can get very um, symbiotic in a bad way in a negative way where mm. you're you're kind of feeding off each other really um, because sometimes there's power to be had by having a negative entity there too so a, a, a manipulator um, in, in life, a, a living person, um, they can have uh, those sort of qualities of being manipulative uh, quite overtly. And that will also draw in a, a dark entity too, because just like we have positive guides and positive beings around us, um, certainly is the case for people who live a different type of life. And, um, and so, first of all, the person has to be willing to want to shift that, wanting to change. Um, and quite often what we'll do is I'll take them to the core of where those negative thoughts and processes came from, any abuse, remove, help to remove any energy that's not theirs, that's in their space, um, and then remove the entity after that. Um, generally, when the entity hasn't got anything to feed on, then there's no reason for it to be there. So it's very easy to release. Um, and there's an old saying um, that wherever there is something like an entity or a dark energy, there's a lack of love. And uh, so what I do is to help bring that, that pureness back into, into their space. So they have got that love vibrational uh, energy back again. Um, and, and you do that so well, and I know because I've been to see you a couple of times myself, and, and yeah, you do it really well, and you provide a beautiful, safe, sacred space uh, in Thank Charleston, you. Adelaide Hills. So, yeah, um, you, you are the epitome of, 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 of love in action, and it's really beautiful to see that in a, in a man, particularly for somebody like myself who's had a few uh, <laughs> past past issues but we won't go there today um I, I would like to just acknowledge a few more people who have hopped on so we've got terry strand thanks very much for joining us good evening terry um marie reed from uh, miljora she says wow sounds oh, wow. amazing 
sounds exciting. Simon, hey guys, hey, Simon. Simon's here, excellent. And Kathy Paris Wendell, hello, Kathy. Uh, Joe Wake is here, hello. Kev Kevin, is that right? Kevin, Kevin Field. Kevin Field, yeah. Kevin yeah, Field. I know. I know Kevin. You know Kevin, so there's a lot of your followers and fans here by the looks of it. Oh, there we go. missed a few more. Re drive, re hello, re you're always here, which is awesome. Thank you, Emma Oliver. Oh, have I missed anyone? I don't think I've missed anyone. So thank you, thank you, thank you all. Paul D. Caterina, much love to you, my brother. You have helped me and my family. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Oh, that's lovely. All right, so we're going to just backtrack a little bit, if that's okay. And we're going to, sure. I, want, I, want, I want you to take us back to South Dakota and okay. shamanism. So yes. to just talk to us a little bit about shamanism, I know I'm really interested because I'm actually going to be doing your shamanism course, yep. um, your training course one with Simon as well. We're both doing that in February, but you have got some training coming up and people yes. can go to your website and find out all about that. But we'll talk about that in a moment. But what's shamanism all about and um, how was it for you when you were learning it for yourself in South Dakota? All right. Well, look, shamanism in essence is the ability to bridge between this reality and all other realities um, and, and learning to communicate with all other realities. So uh, learning to communicate with the plant kingdom, uh, the animal, bird, insect kingdom, um, knowing that there is energy everywhere that's connecting us and binding us all. Um, we might look like we're separate to, to everyone physically, but energetically, we're definitely not. And, uh, and so what I do, I help um, with, with shamanism, I help train people to do exactly basically what, what I've done and uh, what I've learned to do. Um, so look, big, big story being on the reservation. I was lucky enough to, to be there initially for about five months back in 2001. And uh, and I was basically thrown into a situation where I was teaching woodwork in their college, which was fantastic, working with young Native Americans, and um, but also living with a traditional family. And I was mixing it with medicine men uh, all the time. The um, fellow I stayed with, who I'm now brothers with, um, Gary, he's... Um, He's really a medicine man himself. Um, he just doesn't want to say it. Um, and uh, his grandfather and his uncle were both medicine men. And um, he he has quite a following over there himself uh, in people that he helps. Um, the training came kind of indirectly in a lot of ways. Um, and I, I don't expect everyone to understand this one, but I had a lot of my training previously to going to the reservation. So I had a, a guide. Uh, one of the other things I do, I see spirit guides. Now everyone has them. Uh, basically there are other aspects of our soul that have had life experiences. Um, we, group, we regroup with some of our life experiences and that's who we call guides their evolved states of being that have um, uh, experiences that can help us in this life now for us, help us to reach our potential. So I had one medicine man who was with me for about, uh, probably about 15 years. Um, and it's like he was standing right next to me. I, I could be doing anything, driving in the car, in a, a woodworking workshop, and he would give me a bit of a dig in the ribs and um, uh, get me to look at someone else's aura or, or and, and we would discuss that, what we were seeing and uh, or be talking to me about all kinds of things. And But then on the job training with clients too. So it's been a bit of a, a mixed bag of training for me where I've not only certainly worked with elders on, on the reservation and medicine people, um, but I've had it ongoing through my life as well, um, which doesn't happen to everyone, I know. It's not something you can just pull out of thin, thin air. It, it, uh, I was just, I just see myself as, self as being very fortunate 
um, that I've had those experiences happen to me. So. Um, Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And yeah, I'm sure you could talk forever about oh, those experiences. Yes. So, yeah. uh, it's it very hard for you to, uh, to bring it into a nutshell, but I appreciate, appreciate that because it is very exciting to, to hear that you've actually lived with a family. Mm. Um, and so, you, you know, you, 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 you walk the talk and that's, that's another thing I love about you. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to acknowledge Gail. She said, hi, guys. Gail Humphreys, she's joined us. And Nige, Nige, hi, Nige. Great to see you both, he said. Excellent. Um, and before I forget, because I've just looked at some of the comments here, you are offering the chance for to win a spirit guide reading. Is that I, right? I was. Um, I, um, it's on there. <laughs> I know. I think you it is. Are. I, I, I am. You are. <laughs> I, All right. Okay. I'm offering a chance to win a spirit guide. <laughs> we've got we've got some magic elves two. working in the background. <laughs> So all you have to do is follow the prompts in your messenger inbox to, for an opportunity to win a spirit guide reading with Matthew, which is actually what happened to me when I was on one of your fireside chats a, a few right. months ago. And I yes. won a spirit guide reading with you, came up to see you, and then all this amazing stuff has opened up for, um, for both of us to actually do some work together as well, yes. which has been quite incredible. So... Um, and talking of that, we've got a couple of things coming up that we're involved in together. And the first one is um, the Enlightened Tribe convoy trip to Renmark. And we've got 22 people coming up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we're just basically going away for the weekend. We've got some campsites booked. It's going to be absolutely awesome. There's one campsite still available that we've booked under my group name but there may be some other campsites available at the riverbend caravan park we will put the link okay the link's just gone up there in the comments thanks adair in the background um so we'll just be going up having a wonderful weekend uh it's going to be a bit like heal the healer so you'll be bringing your drums with you your rattles and things for sale and you'll be offering a few healings and counselings yeah. and readings as well i believe on that yes. weekend um, and that's a bit like a prelude to the Riverland Wellness Festival that you're also going to be participating in. Yes. And I'm very honoured and privileged because I know that you don't participate in a l hardly any well-being festivals, but you're coming along to the Riverland one. Oh, look, I'm, I'm the eternal hermit, but I, I come out of the cave every now and then. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you uh, used to be the eternal hermit. But... I used to be. <laughs> Not anymore. Not no. anymore. No. no. Um, and and a bit of a lone wolf as well is what you've I've heard you describe yourself as, but that's all changing Possibly. as well. Yes. Yeah. No. I, it's. I think it's very important these days to be working with other people, um, like like you know we're going to be doing. Um, the Native American. Sorry. The tribal elders of all of the tribes around the world acknowledge this time as a coming together of the tribes including white people so it's really important that we do work together this is this is about union and about um community um and i know for a fact that um there are elders that meet several times a year throughout the world to work together to help what's going on on the planet now and uh so they're formulating ways to bring bring uh change and, and growth and and open up all of those beautiful energies that are coming through as well so we have to work yeah. with them it's really important uh Absolutely. It's, look, it's an exciting time as, as far as I'm concerned, and especially with just yesterday being two, 2nd of February 2022. Mm -hmm. Woof! What a yeah. portal of energy that opened up and what an auspicious time to be to be living and really living in our truth. Um, it's huge. And yeah, and I know I, I, I have tended to work on my own a lot as well, um, and there's an element of control 
in that and when you surrender that and you just kind of go well you know where where does spirit want me to be where where do i want to be taken to what you know just show up for them um and that's pretty much what we're doing when we go to renmark in a few weeks time so thank you so much for joining us on that on that oh, journey who knows what's going to... <laughs> exactly anything's I just, possible i just wish your canoe was ready for then <laughs> oh me too i was thinking about that this afternoon <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all right we'll have simon's um we'll have simon's kayaks instead as an alternative oh, okay. hey simon <laughs> all right <laughs> i'll just uh oh here we go simon's put wow what an incredible exciting year i really feel it and it truly it truly is beautiful noticing all the amazing people coming together and opening up the endless possibilities yeah absolutely yeah, and yeah. kathy kathy paris wendell another one on 22nd of february should be amazing yes of course yes we have got another one yes two in one month how incredible is that yeah that's going to be a wowzer uh yeah they Quinn, called it. Quinn. sorry uh i was just going to quickly say um i've been given a bit of information from the galactic beings about about the 20 well it would be the 22nd um this is the beginning of uh the breakdown in the old ways um and well, i mean it's already been happening but this is a more obvious uh appearance of breaking down of the old ways and uh i won't go too deeply into all of that but um, um this is also the opening of the new ways coming through and uh and like we just talked about people working together more um new leaders coming to the surface for our politics when there's very few leaders to even choose from at the moment mm -hmm. and yeah. um yeah so amazing time it sure is it sure is and it's great to be on the journey um and just finding like-minded people which is actually what enlightened tribe is is all about community making a difference there's amazing brilliant communities being set up everywhere so if in and tri if enlightened tribe isn't for you and you've got some other people that you know that are setting up tribes and convoys and communities then you know go for it let us know let's share it here you know it, exactly. it's, it's about, yeah it's, it's about collectively collective and, and unity so um matthew it's been an absolute pleasure i think we've actually covered just about everything i know <laughs> could have slipped some channeling in there for another five minutes we could have slipped some channeling <laughs> but that's Woo! okay another we, time we yeah we'll do well i think we'll need some chat i think they wanted a bit more than half an hour for channeling i think that's probably why they've <laughs> held back yeah <laughs> oh dear so thank you so much thank for you very in. much sir. um and if people want to subscribe to your email list to find out details about your upcoming shamanism training your drum making workshops they can either go on your website or they can go to sueshaw.com.au and have a look at your beautiful listing on the Enlightened Tribe Global Wellness Directory. So all of the information will be there. Um, and I think that's everything. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. My God, uh, awesome. Thank you, awesome so. connections. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. So, and thank you, Adair, in the background for always making this yes. happen and supporting both Matthew and I. So, really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Until next week, take care, be well, be kind. <laughs>